Tom Edmond from uh, TTM and Greg Maxwell from uh, Northrop Grumman Corporation. Thank you for joining me. We're going to have a, a little discussion about sustainability and how important that is and its impacts on the electronics industry. Let me start off, um, you know, sustainability, we've had some uh, goes with it in the past. You know, we went from leaded to lead-free electronics in, for most of the industry, and uh, that was a fairly significant change, but now sustainability, much more broad. It's just affecting so many different aspects. Uh, arguably, it will change the industry going forward over the next several years. So I want to ask you a few questions, have a little discussion about that as we go forward. But let's start off, tell us a little bit about, uh, Greg, let's start with you. Um, what is Northrop Grumman uh, doing to aggressively address sustainability? What are, what are some of the programs you're either starting or have already implemented? Sure, absolutely. We, we launched a specific and intentional strategy around sustainability in 2022, uh, kind of in three prongs, our footprint, our handprint, and our blueprint. The footprint is all within our own facilities. How can we uh, meet significant goals? So for example, we want to be reduce 50% of our emissions by 2030. We want to reduce our waste to, um, you know, out of the, the sites uh, by 10% by 2030. We want to um, reduce our waste or wastewater emissions by 10%. So within our own sort of leading by example within our own sites, um, our handprint working with our suppliers like TTM and our customers, how do we design products that are sustainable, not just in the products themselves, but the manufacturing process. And then the blueprint part is how do we work with our communities to support them where we work and live. Uh, so those are the three areas that we're aggressively working on with a very defined strategy within the company. Tom, TTM, same question. What, what have you guys uh, been doing, planning to do? Sure, I, I think it's a, a similar uh, situation. I, we, we um, you know, you start with uh, really what is needed from a, from a TTM perspective in terms of what we track. And uh, for us, that's water usage. Uh, when you're in the printed circuit board uh, business, certainly water usage, uh, very important. So increasing that recycled uh, content. Uh, electricity, so how do, we, how do we source our electricity and power? Uh, and looking at renewable sources uh, from a power perspective. Uh, and then um, uh, when you look at emissions, for us that's really about um, the equipment that we bring in uh, and how we think really life cycle of equipment uh, and the kind of equipment that we bring in in order to reduce uh, the emissions overall. Uh, but I'd say it's, it's uh, very important as a first step that we, that we improve our tracking. Uh, and that's been an effort that, that has been uh, ongoing for us. And I think we have now are at that point where we're tracking pretty well across our global facilities. Uh, and then we're educating, um, educating both our customers in terms of where are we on emissions. Uh, like, like Greg, we also have a goal to, uh, to become uh, carbon neutral by 2040 uh, in our case. Uh, and uh, tracking our, our progress against that goal. Um, so. Uh, those are the major areas of, of focus for us. Excellent. I think Wonderful. also, just to add on what Tom said, we're both investing in new greenfield facilities. With both of us have designs for how can we make that the most sustainable, right, with new equipment and right out from the front. How do we design it so it's sustainable and meets the, the future versus what we may have done in the past? Speaking about the future, as you look forward, um, what do you perceive as the most difficult challenge that sustainability uh, and the changes around sustainability will bring to your company or the industry. Tom, why don't we start with you first? Uh, sure, and I think Greg will probably say the same, similar thing. I, I think scope three mm -hmm. uh, is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so when yeah. you're really uh, moving beyond uh, the facilities that we control and you're starting to, to move into the vendors and starting right. to understand where the vendors are at. Um, and then vendors, it's a global vendor base. Uh, some, so they have a different perspective on standards uh, and how they're thinking about their own emissions. And so uh, scope three for us is very complex. Um, that's probably our, our biggest challenge, I would say. Uh, so looking both uh, to your suppliers as well as your customers. Yes. Both yes. up and down. So, so of course, as we think about scope three, yes, up and down, 
but really the, the, the pressure, if you will, is coming from our customer base. That's who we're really trying to respond to. Sure. Uh, and, and so the emphasis is with vendors and how we can work with vendors to really understand where they're at mm -hmm. uh, and how they're progressing. And, and the same kind of transparency that we offer our customers, we need to make sure our vendors offer to us. Same thing for us. We're looking when you know, we looked at our supplier code of conduct and it said, we actually changed it. It said we expect our suppliers to be ISO 14001 or equivalent, which we've never done before, to say, hey, we want to see you have a sustainability approach. Uh, so not only do we expect that, but we look for suppliers that have that as not necessarily as a source selection criteria, but those are the types of suppliers that would embrace our same values and our same approach to sustainability. I think the biggest challenge besides that one is just finding the talent around environmental management. There's not a lot of um, trained engineers because it's just not a very, at this point, within the, at least within the U.S., it's not a big major, right? There's you know there's a lot of electrical engineers and right. mechanical engineers and you know computer science engineers, but environmental management. So trying to get folks within our facilities management teams qualified. that are qualified and mm -hmm. that can speak to that is, is a challenge for us. Gotcha. Um, so I also think, you know, as the, you know, the regulatory pressures that are coming through, you know, European regulations and some of the EPA in the mm -hmm. U.S. And, and, and other places, that's a fairly dynamic right. change. It's, like, yeah. it's not like it's fixed right now. Yes. We know where we're going. How does that present a challenge either to your companies, you talked about your companies, but also to the industry? I think um, it's definitely a challenge to try to keep up with it or... Uh, especially with the changing administrations and then the executive orders come back and forth, you know, how to, how to sort of plan ahead and mm -hmm. then have stick-to-itiveness type of approach this is a challenge, I think, from the regulatory. Gotcha. And then I guess for Tom, working globally, you know, <laughs> you know trying to meet yeah. each of the regional, you know, standards differently or requirements, yep. you know. Well, and, and electronics in general, you don't just manufacture it for, oh, well, I'll just do this for one place. Right. Right. You tend to manufacture for the world, and if the world's not consistent, that just also just starts bringing a lot. You, you end up having to manufacture everything to the highest bar, that's I'm right. guessing. That's right. And, I, and, and today, that, that's Europe. Uh, I think European, our, certainly our European customers uh, are leading the way as we, as we uh, uh, look at, at the kind of environmental uh, standards that we need to put in place. Um, so, uh, absolutely agree. It, it, it makes it all the more difficult when there are different standards, when there's different um, uh, requirements, uh, depending on where you're operating in the world. And, and within the U.S., as I'm sure Northrop has to deal with, it's within the, you know, which state, Individual the state states, state yeah. right. yes. requirements, yeah. uh, which would certainly make it challenging. Yeah, just, it, it'd just be nice if we could just say, here's what we need right. and decide. But it just seems like that's an, have, always having a moving target and having that uncertainty. Uncertainty is never good for business, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah. Any suggestions on how IPC, what IPC should be doing to help approach this challenge? I think as an OEM, you know, you're well positioned to help communicate awareness and help to drive standards, just like we do in quality or other aspects of electronic manufacturing. So we really value IPC as an OEM because you can help pull together a disparate voices and then help drive standards. And I think it's no different whether it's quality or environmental sustainability, right? A different kind of quality. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Interesting. I think that the standards for sure, um, the other area that I highlight is best practice sharing. I yeah. think uh, as you, you bring together a community, a very broad community of electronics manufacturing, and to bring that community together with the OEMs and have the right, uh, provide the right forum uh, for yeah. discussion, uh, really, really helpful as well. I think the third area I would say that IPC is really uniquely positioned is the education piece, right? Mm -hmm. Just like you talked about educating for safety or quality, you know, yeah. FOD. Okay, well, how do you produce sustainability? What, you know, right. how do you, you know, minimize emissions? How do you handle water treatment? That education, rather than having every company come up with their own training, right, would be valuable. Yep. So I, you know, I, when I think about you know trying to react as an industry uh, to sustainability. To me, it's, it, it starts with design to really effectively do it. I mean, right now, you talk about, you know, fixing, you know, water mm -hmm. issues. That, that's kind of today's problem, if you right. think about it, as I think about it. And the factories do need to advance, and as you said, greenfielding these new efforts to make sure that they're built with sustainability in mind. But we also need to start with the design of the products. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really need to be, you know, 
considering all that, so one of the things, as you mentioned, training that I think about, you know, do we need to be providing, am I a certified sustainable designer? Mm -hmm. Am I a certified, you know, uh, sustainable, what have you, you know, as you go forward. And, and so you create these expertise, uh, expertises as you go through to really try to shift the whole ecosystem, right. if you will. And, and that's not a by tomorrow type of thing. I mean, that's a, a long, I mean, think about when, uh, you know, I used to work a lot in the automotive sector. And those, every car was a five-year plan before, it, you know, from design to launch. And then it has to sit on the roads for right. how many ever more years after that. So as you think about the, the scope of electronics in different industries, I just think it's a, it's a very long time frame to have it all propagate down through. Right, right. Yeah, that, I think that's, that's a, a great point. And, and if you think about the, the designers that are coming into, or engineers that are coming into our workforce, that's the the kind of thing that they would get excited about if they if they know if they have a standard that they can design to if they have a thought process that they can that they can embrace that that's the kind of thing that that certainly younger uh engineers are going to get excited about um getting involved with yeah that's a good point any so i've got a, another question to ask but before we get to that other thoughts on the sustainability front that you guys points that you'd like to bring up with each other or myself and we talked a lot about the customer and supplier working together, right? Uh, I think from our industry, you know, within the aerospace defense, um, the, the designing it into the product, there's some challenges with that just in the nature of what business yeah. we're in. Um, but I think our employees expect that of us, right? Yes. I mean, especially yeah. the younger generation. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where there's opportunity because they're like, what are you doing to protect the environment? I want to work for a company that's sustainable that's environmentally friendly and, and is focused on that so i think that's a big point of you know, how the ipc can help as well is to promote that we are an industry that cares about the environment it's hard to find good people and if you aren't a sustainable organization you're basically closing off entire pools yes. of people yeah. which would be a yeah. challenge they're yes. opting so, out and say i don't want to work yeah in exactly industry, right? so i'll tell you one of the things that that uh, i've really enjoyed our chief operating officer is he's carried this message um, with our with our workforce is he starts uh, talking trying to t to take this issue and bring it down to to really the the worker the operator level if you will the individual the individual and so um, it, one of the great just just to give some statistics you know we generate about uh, 240 metric kilotons of carbon dioxide emissions a year well that doesn't mean, mean much. much yeah right. <laughs> so you take that and and a mature tree consumes about 48 pounds of CO2 okay. per year. Okay, so then you say, how many trees is that? Well, it's about 11,200,000 trees. It sounds like a lot of trees. Sounds like a lot of trees. How many trees are there per acre? Well, it's about 160 to 170 mature trees per acre of forested land. So you take that down and, and you get to, well, that's about 66,000 acres. 66,000 acres, okay or 103 square miles. Well, I can get square miles. I mean, I, you know, yeah. you, can, you can figure out square miles. So then you start to think, okay, that's where we are today. Yeah. Now, where can we get by 2040 in order to reduce the number of trees that would be required to balance out what we are emitting? Um, and, and that, you know, as he carries that message, it just, it just really hits home, I think, to, to everyone who's listening about yeah. what we're it means talking something about yeah. yeah yeah in terms for of every little bit i say hey that's three more trees i don't have to that, exactly you know, <laughs> exactly worry about and then and, and adjacent to that within your employees as i talked about the blueprint how we work with communities um, so it's not just about how you're manufacturing and how you're supplying to your customer and that whole supply chain value chain but i think the other thing that we found a lot of benefit on is our employees get really jazzed when we partner with our communities. So, for example, I'm in Baltimore, Maryland, so the Chesapeake Bay is really close. Mm -hmm. Northrop Grumman has a specific program called Technology for Conservation, and we'll partner with local environmental nonprofits. Um, and we did some great things to help save the oysters in the bay, right? We've yeah. created, we've taken some of our defense technology and created acoustic hydrophones oh. and sonars yeah. to help place the oysters properly. So we have a great p partnership. So I think doing things like that as a company, while it's not directly related to your business, but it's applying your know-how and then you're getting your employees engaged with the community can go a long way, right? So it's not just showing up at work, it's just how do we be a good corporate citizen within the world today? What keeps the electronics industry from moving faster 
to achieve sustainability objectives. I mean, so you talked about 2030, 2040. I've heard other industries talking about 2050 objectives. What's stopping us from accelerating this? I mean, I think the, so there's, there's a few things. I, I, I think, you know, technology, um, I, Greg highlighted this earlier, many of us have older facilities. So our ability to, to modify technology, make sure that we're, that we're able to, uh, to, to travel on that roadmap of, of reduction, it takes time. I mean, mm -hmm. I, think, I think for mm -hmm. us to, again, to understand the problem is one thing. We've identified it. We, have, we understand where we are. We baselined. We understand where we need to go. We have a roadmap. Accelerating the roadmap is a question usually of capital dollars and how much you can spend in terms of capital dollars, uh, how much, uh, and, and then also where customers need us to be. I mean, I think it's always that combination, but ultimately it's cash. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's not just a, hey, this company or this industry, but it's really the world as a whole. It's governments working with companies, working with industry to all work together to, right figure out the best path because if we take you know this uh, if I'm misstating what you're saying but if, if we go down a certain path and then you know five years from now we say oh well actually no just kidding we wanted to go this right. way that's right. going to be a problem absolutely yeah I, I think you already mentioned the, the unforeseeable or the uncertain foreseeable future right, right. we're not sure where everything's going um, the changing and inconsistent regulatory requirements throughout the globe right it's not so much a challenge for us as a Primarily, we have international, you know, mostly aerospace and defense in the U.S., but Tom, I think, yep. must drive you nuts from Asia to Europe to, <laughs> you know. Um, but I also think, um, you know, as Tom talked about, there's, to retrofit is a lot of cost, right? And so, um, it, like any business, we've got to be able to justify what's the return on the investment. So that could take some time just to get through th things, right? Um, and I also think the last piece is just there's still... Um, in society in general, you know, um, what's the cost benefit, right? right. I mean, you know, I'll just use the electric vehicles, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, if we put more EVs on the road, that's great, but the lithium batteries, and if you look at the cost and the environmental impact of producing and mining right. lithium, right? Yeah. Then you look yeah. at the whole big picture and say, okay, are we really making an impact or not? Anything else uh, to talk about on the sustainability side as we uh, wind up our discussion? No, I just appreciate IPC bringing this to the forefront of the industry and, and having the opportunity to talk about it today. It's important within the aerospace and defense industry. Uh, so we as Northrop Grumman really appreciate the, the opportunity to talk about it. It's great to have our customer or supplier here and show how we're working together. Right? And it's yeah. really important. It's got to be customer and suppliers and together, right? That whole value right. chain. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I would say you bring that together, the community, the right community. And, and so... Uh, yeah, this kind of dialogue is great, great. I would just encourage it to, yeah. encourage you to keep going. I, I really think it's, you know, so many times you have this uh, customer to supplier relationship instead of this collaborative effort. And right. this is something that you, we most definitely need a collaborative effort. So I, I appreciate that you guys are already working yeah. together toward, but uh, hopefully we can get more of the industry working in that direction. So Absolutely. Yeah, I you mean, both. you know, as we have enough com regulatory compliance requirements right for flow down it'd be nice to just do this because it's the right thing to do it's, it's the right great. thing yeah. yeah very good thank you